Hey, you're just in time for Dreamcatcher, the program where you can find peace through understanding your dreams. I'm your host, Robin Hardin. On today, you're going to get a peek inside my mind. I'm going to share with you how I saw God in the most unlikely of places in a popular children's movie. A little later, Bambi is stuck on some stairs and Tomasa helps a little boy who is stuck in a fence. But here is Pastor Rick for the very first time. Hi, Miss Robin. It's Destiny. I'm here with Pastor Rick and some of his family, his daughter, beautiful daughters right there. Say hi. And so he has had a reoccurring dream and we would like the interpretation. Here's Pastor Rick. Hi, Robin. I've uh, been having this dream for several years of the time in my life. It's been reoccurring. I went, uh, had a change of life several years ago where I went, quit a job, went back to school to improve my education so I could have a better life instead of working in a factory all my life. And God directed it. I know he brought us to Tennessee after it was all said and done, but I've always had this dream. It's reoccurring about I was in this place in this apartment and I was trying to move from there and, it, and that's it's every time it's I'm trying to get everything together in the car to move back to where I had to move back to and I don't understand it I don't know what God's trying to maybe show me through all this but it's reoccurring several years several years I've been seeing it and it's always being in that place where I was done with school trying to get back with my family and trying to move back to, it was Illinois at that time, where God had led us eventually to Tennessee. And if you can help me with this, I'd be really grateful. Thank you. Hey, Pastor Rick, thanks for sending me this dream selfie. Most times in a dream, a house represents the person because we house the Holy Spirit. In your dream, you're in a small apartment. And obviously you're a married man with a child now, so you need something more substantial. You need a home for to, you know, to raise a family. And in the dream, you're trying to go back home. It's like a next step, but it's also going back. Um, I believe the Lord wants you to go forward. And the reason you keep having this dream is because he's waiting for you to understand the meaning and then take action. You have finished school, you're at that time in your life when, you're, when this started, and you wanted to go back to family, where I think the Lord wants you to go forward instead of going back. And that doesn't mean, obviously, that you forget your family. Your family's the most important thing. It's through your roots, through our foundation. But I think, over time, Satan has somehow convinced you that, that you're just this small apartment, spiritually, and really you're this nice home. And I think the Lord is waiting on you to see you like He sees you. And that while you don't want to leave the family ever, you take those foundations and you go forward. I believe the Lord has something for you. He's trying to move you. In the dream, He's trying to move you. But something is holding you back. And I believe that it's probably the lies of the enemy, of Satan, telling you that you're, that you're small, that, that you need to stay in this little apartment. But God has something much bigger for you, and He wants you to step out. And of course, take your family with you. But um, I think if you pray and you ask the Lord, what is it? Maybe there's something that He's, had, he's asked you to do, and you haven't done it for whatever reason. Maybe you've forgotten it's been so long ago. But as we know, God does everything in order, and it's like connect the dots. If you go from one to three, your picture doesn't come out right. And I believe that there's something that that you haven't done yet that the Lord's asked you to do. And because this is reoccurring for some time ago, there's a possibility you've forgotten, but there's a step somewhere along the line that God wants you to do. And it, like I said, it may just be seeing yourself like He sees you. I have a feeling you're not dreaming big enough because God has big plans for you. Thanks for sharing this, Pastor. There's another line in this story that these little dreams are going around and they're looking for sleeping people. There's so much in this movie that brought me to scripture that reminded me of the scripture of Job 33:15. It says, God, it says he, God, speaks in dreams, in visions of the night when deep sleep falls on people. That wasn't just for Job. 
That was for us. That's how God talks to us. In this movie, the big friendly giant knew who to connect these dreams to. You don't get my dream, and you don't get her dream. We all have a special dream, and God put that dream there. In Genesis 37, remember Joseph had a dream about his brothers bowing to him? God knew he needed that dream because one day he was going to be sold as a slave and be in a pit. Now we hear these stories and it, they kind of go over our heads. Imagine your family kidnapping you and hiding you somewhere, maybe in a storage unit or something, until someone comes along and buys you. This is what happened to this, this, this young man, a young man. God knew he was going to have to have a dream to look forward to that one day he was going to be raised. Later on in the same chapter, Joseph is in prison and he's interpreting dreams for people about the cupbearer. Now that was an easy dream because he was going to get, you know, raised up, let out of prison and, and be able to go back and have his position back in the castle. But he also had to interpret a dream for a baker which didn't come out so well. <laughs> his future wasn't as good. But because he knew what the future was, he had a chance that he could have repented. He could have whatever. He had a chance to make things right. Because he knew in three days his head was going to be cut off and he was going to be impaled on a pole. God knows what dreams we need. And they're not always those sweet, pleasant ones that make us feel good. Sometimes it's to instruct us or to warn us of something. God is talking to you in dreams. My guest today, Bambi, is my sister, and she has a dream she's going to share. Her dream, I believe, Bambi, is about where we used to live in Virginia? Yes. Okay, good. Now, I had this dream the second night, so okay. I had two Virginia dreams in a row. Okay. And I don't remember anything about this dream except for one scene, and I'm climbing a ladder, or stairs, they're stairs, mm -hmm. and they're metal stairs. I remember they were black. But they, they were the kind of stairs like the lookout tower mm -hmm. in Virginia because mm -hmm. they were the metal stairs and you could see through them. And I climbed so far and that was as far as I could go. And I froze up and I'm like, I'm done. That's as far as I can go. And mom's behind me <laughs> urging me to go uh -huh. on further. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I can't go any further. And what's funny about that was when we were on the lookout tower and I froze up, <laughs> mom was behind me trying to encourage me to go further. In real life. In real mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't go any further. And, and then that happened in the dream, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a lookout tower. I don't know what it was. Right. But that's, that's all I remember in that dream. Well, you know, because that's all, it seems so insignificant because that's such one scene, but it's so important because we know as your sister, I know that you have a real fear of heights. And yet you're climbing this, and you did. You went as far as you could, and you simply couldn't go any further. And stairs, climbing stairs, elevators, heels, that's promotion in a dream. That's spiritual promotion. And you feel like you've gotten as far as you can, and you just, you just can't go any further. And mom's encouraging you, which is good, because she is who, she is our spiritual foundation now that grandma's gone. Yes. Um, so we have mom who is who's behind you and supporting you and mm -hmm. saying it's okay. And she did in real life as well. Yes, she did. But I, I believe the Lord is saying to you, because it's a ladder and the fear, because we know that you have that fear in real life of heights, don't be afraid to go to the next height spiritually either. It's, it's easy to get comfortable where we are, but I believe God has something. I think God wants you to go to that next step. Mm -hmm. And you may not know what that next step is yet. But don't let fear come in and say, no, I'm good here. I'm just going to stay here. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, ask the Lord. He'll show you. Ask him to search and show you what might be holding you back to that mm -hmm. next level. It's funny that we're talking about that and ministries because um, the two ministries that I know that I'm called to are prayer mm -hmm. and um, praise and worship. Right. Mm -hmm. And I do the prayer through Moms in Prayer. Mm -hmm. um, and praise and worship, I actually lead praise and worship with Moms in Prayer, but that's at best once a year. Right. Um, I've been taking the piano lessons this time for a little over two years, mm -hmm. about two and a half years probably. And um, I've taken many vocal lessons in the past, but they're right. actually working with my vocals too now. Um, and a, 
And a few years ago, when I was praying with a lady in Moms in Prayer, she told me that she just felt like the Lord had something for me in ministry with my music. Wow. And she said, you know, it may take time. You may have to get better mm -hmm. at your piano. Mm -hmm. um, but she really felt like that. And um, I know that that is a ministry that God's called me to. Right. Um, and I don't have much opportunity to use it right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember as a teenager, I remember dreaming. <laughs> and, and I'd be singing and I'd be raising my hands and worshiping. And it was a, a freedom that I didn't have at that right. age. Right, right. I have that freedom right. now, but it right. took me years to get out of oh, my shyness, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, so it's just interesting where God's going to take mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. You know, He's. You got to get the technical part yeah. ready. You yeah, know, you do. He 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 wants excellence. Mm -hmm. You know, he so. does. And it's cool that someone has said this to you prior, and now it just gets confirmed. And that's what God does with right. His Word. He confirms it. And some of that is to say to comfort you is you're not. It's not too late. You're not too old. It's not what you know. All those things that go through our head. Uh, I don't know my piano well enough. Well, you're making advances. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so he's. It's sort of like he's being mom kind of. She's kind of like a, uh -huh. a type of God, and it, it's okay. So you know, keep climbing that ladder. All right. Don't 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 just decide. Okay, I'm, I, this is far enough. Don't be afraid to take that next step. And I think about Moses. How old was he? Forty when he? Yeah, he was forty years in the wilderness in the, before he stepped out. Yeah, I mean, he was older before mm -hmm. he was actually used yes, in yes. his ministry. You know. Yes. Um, so age is not means nothing yeah. to God. Look at Sarah and Abraham. And, yeah, and even when you're not even looking at the biblical figures or spiritual, mm -hmm. um, Kentucky Fried Chicken. When he's 60 or something, when he... He was older, yeah. yeah when he, he was quite a bit older yeah. when he started that, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, it's just yeah. a number to God. He don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I guess... Good. Oh, and I wanted to say, since I cry all the time, <laughs> 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 I remember I had a youth pastor and he called me Jeremiah, the weeping <laughs> prophet. <laughs> She's back home in the orphanage, and she knows he's there. She can't see him, and she decides she's going to step off this balcony, which is several stories high, and she has faith that he's going to catch her. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to trust him so much that we just step out, knowing that he's going to catch us. My name is Tiffany, and um, I just wanted to uh, say a little something about the Dream Catcher Catch Your Dream Journal. Now, before this book, I did used to dream, but it was probably maybe like one dream a week, like one good dream a week that had like substance in it. Well, after I got this book, I was dreaming every single night. This book filled up with my dreams within three months and I was in need of another book and so I said to Miss Robin I said it's like your books are like a dream catalyst that enables you to just dream more and hear more from the Lord I needed another book so I got two so that I can be prepared I should probably get three but it's a great book and you should make sure that you get one I'm here with my guest, Tomasa. We were on camera earlier and then we went off camera because Tomasa had some dreams that were personal and they had people's names in it that she didn't want to share. Mm -hmm. And I tell you that so that if you have a dream that is just too personal, but you want to know what it is the Lord is saying, we can still do that. I won't uncover you, even if you come to the studio like Tomasa has. <laughs> anything that's too personal, we don't want to uncover people. Right. We want to bless people and we want people to know that the Lord is speaking to them. Mm -hmm. So I think she's got a couple now that yes, <laughs> we're back to ones we can share. Yes, so the first one was me and three of my friends in a car and we got pulled over. Um, it was a, a lady cop and she said that I was speeding, but I knew she was lying. Mm. Um, so I explained to her that she was lying and I went on to tell her that another cop had just lied on me last week about something. Mm. And I went on to tell her that there was a serious problem with the police force 
and, and this is what I'm telling her. I then somehow ended up in this cop's house with her family. Everybody else was in the car. Um, I was explaining to the police officer that pulled me over that this injustice has to stop. She then said that she would not write me a ticket and we left. The scene changed to us being in college and I attended, a, I attended um, in real life a historically black college. Okay. So in the dream, it didn't look like my historically black college, but it looked, it had the setting of a historically black college. And what I mean by that is um, the band was like going through the middle of the um, campus mm -hmm. and it was just like live and loud. It was a lot of stuff happening yeah. like it would be um, when I went to go visit other colleges. There right. was just a lot going on on campus all okay. the time. Right. Um, so I sat next to a person that I know, a, a good friend of mine, and um, she was telling me about her husband. She's not currently married, um, but she was telling me about her husband and she was telling me that that man was ready to commit. Um, she kind of had an attitude about it though because it was like, taking him long to do so. Okay. Um, so she told me that, and then the scene changed. Um, and as I'm walking out of that building that her and I were in, again, in this scene, I was sitting next to her, it was parade going through the campus, whatever have you. I walk out of that scene, there is a little boy to my right stuck under a railing. Uh, I broke the rail to let the kid free, but it was a rail that people walked or like skateboarded on. So I tried to fix it. Mm -hmm. After I broke it, I oh, tried okay. to fix it. Okay, after that, I was walking through campus and people were selling paraphernalia for a young black kid that had been shot and killed. The paraphernalia read, we, I love ES. Um, and I knew in the dream that ES stood for Eric Scott. Mm -hmm. I, don't know. Okay. I know an Eric Scott in real life mm -hmm. as a co-worker. Mm -hmm. Okay. As I saw this, I remember um, not feeling good about them selling paraphernalia with his name. Like, I didn't like that they were doing mm -hmm. that or people were doing that. Right. I don't know why I didn't like it, but in dream, I didn't like it. I started walking up to what would look like an administrative office on campus. Um, I looked to my left and I saw someone that I refer to as a big sister. Mm -hmm. I thought to myself, she looked very pretty, but she had gained a little weight. She had on a purple dress and her hair was very long and some of it was even in her face. I walked into the administrative bu building and saw one of my really good friends, the same friend I was just sitting next to, we were talking about marriage and commitment. Um, I saw her and she passed by me real quick. We didn't really acknowledge it, she just passed by me real quick. I then was led by someone to a back room. In the back room, there was a lot of liquor. It was like a bar. Mm -hmm. And I knew, in the gym, I just knew, that this was the room that like the Greek organizations from campus would come to get their liquor for parties. While there, Eric Scott, the um, man that I used to work with, mm -hmm or that I know from um, work or whatever, appears, he appears. My friend, my really good friend that passed by me, but then walks, in, walks back into the room. In real life, she's a lot shorter than me. Hmm. In this dream, she is really tall. And she had a scarf draped on her chest, and on the scarf were little emblems. Um, they kind of look like sorority emblems, but is I couldn't quite quite see the crest. I knew she was about to go to lunch with some very important people, like some high society people. Mm -hmm. So when we got really close, and she was like, they asked me to go to lunch, and I was like, okay. Um, I knew it was with high society yeah. people, and yeah. then I woke up. Her height kind of tells you that too. Statue, she's mm -hmm. high statue. Um, the first part of the dream is the whole dream is is kind of about black life mm -hmm. and and you know the fun part the lively mm -hmm. the part of it but also the unfortunate part of injustice mm -hmm. of this person being shot mm -hmm. but the first part with the police officer even with everything going on in the world this police officer was representing the church and the reason I say that is because it was a female and a female in revelation was the church Mm. And a police officer is authority. So as believers, we 
you know, we know that we understand the authority of the pastor mm -hmm. and of, of, of the church. But this female, this church, has used its authority incorrectly and has stepped over the line. Of course, later in the dream, a young boy is shot, so that's more, I assume it was a young boy, was shot, so that's more um, injustice. But the Lord is showing you that there's injustice isn't just in the world, unfortunately, that it's people will hide behind religion mm -hmm. and use their authority incorrectly. And then you're in her home well, your other friends are out there. The Lord is allowing you to get closer. The rest of people are kind of safe. And you're in, the, the car itself is a ministry. The three right. of you are in ministry together. And some authority person in the church has misused their um, authority over your life. And it's not the first time you've experienced this in the past. Yeah. That can be false doctrine. That can be just leading people a little astray. You have a friend named Eric Scott, and yet there's someone who was shot in the selling the merchandise. The reason that's uncomfortable is you know, as I know her, that there's something, there's some reason. This young, this person who's deceased isn't going to get this money, mm -hmm. and you would, one would think it would be for the burial or to help the family, mm -hmm. but you knew something was up. So that's an injustice in itself, wow. that sometimes injustices are, are done from people that we know and trust, you know. It, I, the first thing I thought of was, what a scheme. This person's dead and I'm gonna mm. make money off their death. It can look good, but you knew that it wasn't. So he's showing you a discernment. Okay. And you weren't afraid to confront them and say, hey, this has got to stop. So God has kind of pulled you out as the one to take a stand. The other people are still in the car. You're the one who went face to face and said, this has to stop. And it was personal because you're there with the family. Um, the fact that you're in college is, um, it's an, it was an important time in your life, in mm -hmm. real life, mm -hmm. but it's also education. Mm -hmm. We're being educated. And in your case, in this dream, it, it, we get educated worldly and we get educated spiritually. Mm -hmm. You went to help this young boy. Many times an unidentified young male in a dream is a prophet. Mm -hmm. And this young boy is trapped and you set him free. And I really believe the Lord is wanting you to set free the prophet within your life. Mm. And when you do that, you also are going to help fix it back. You're going to put it back. You, people are used to this being a skateboarding thing. People are used to being to, you being Tomasa, their friend, or Tomasa, their family member, or Tomasa. And so it's going to, it's going to, it's going to have to stretch some people when they realize that their Tomasa that they know is also the prophetic and that you're gonna, you're gonna free this prophetic gift in you. Wow. And you're gonna have to, it's gonna take some rebuilding of, for some people, but that's okay, you did the right thing. If this was a real child, you wouldn't have left that child right. in there, you would have freed him. And right. so you did the right thing, and then you, then you helped fix it back. Right. Um, oh, the, the, the young, the girl, that you know kind of had an attitude because she was a little bit impatient she's glad that this guy finally's come around but she's mm -hmm. a little impatient but god is showing you her height this you know in its statue it's it's she has she's promoted mm -hmm. and even though she you know her attitude has not always been mm -hmm. what it maybe should have been you all have remained friends mm -hmm. you were very close it also shows that you weren't jealous of her height you weren't jealous of her lunch with these very important people. You weren't jealous that so-and-so finally got around to asking her to marry. Mm -hmm. Things that would be desirable in your own life, right. you were happy for her. You weren't jealous of that, right. which is, is noble because it's very easy to get envy, especially when someone else has experienced something that you've been wanting or praying right. for. So it's kind of your community and your, hmm. your life. And, and there is good with bad, mm -hmm. but you didn't let the, you didn't let it affect you. You didn't let you confronted the injustice. You you understood there was something off with this selling of merchandise. Mm -hmm. You're not going to compromise. You didn't compromise and buy paraphernalia because it was wrong. You didn't compromise with the police officer. Mm -hmm. You said this you know this has got to stop. And yet at the same time, you were gentle and 
compassionate with your friend and and that is is interesting you say that about the little boy and the prophet because I do feel like I'm reaching a point now where it can't be contained where you just got to let them free uh, I feel that I feel like it's about to burst at any if I'm in a setting and somebody is saying something and it's the Holy Spirit shows me something I try to like say well just you know, mm -hmm. why don't mm -hmm. you tell them? You yeah. show them. But it gets to a point where it's just like, I have to. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's going to burst. Not in a bad way. Right. I just feel like it's right. going to burst out of my chest if I don't. Yes, yes. Um, and it's interesting because I asked you, you know, I had these dreams last year, but are they still re <laughs> That's right. relevant? That's right, yes. I had this dream like last summer, wow. um, but I just reached that point this year wow. within the last Maybe. And these dreams came back mm -hmm. to you because most people won't remember a dream that long ago. It's hard enough to remember last night's dream. Right. And that he would allow that dream to stay with you and to come back. And now you're wow. feeling it. You're feeling like it. But just know when that little boy was locked in there, it was the right thing to let him out. Of course you let him out. Mm -hmm. But it's going to break. It's going to change things for people. And people aren't comfortable with change. Mm -hmm. BFG is a big friendly giant and in his day job he goes out and he catches dreams and these dreams are little colorful things that float around and he catches them and he puts them in bottles with people's names on it and he knows who everyone's dream belongs to just like our father God knows whose dreams goes with what there's a line in the, in the movie that says, this little girl, she's an orphan, and she's looking on at someone else's dream, and she says, it's so quick. And the big friendly giant says, it's quick on the inside, but on the outside, it's so big. If you've ever really heard from the Lord, and I don't necessarily mean an audible voice, but that still small voice, maybe when you're in your devotions, it's like a download. There's so much. It seems like he told you that quick, but when you go to write it or to tell it or to share it, it's so much. He's quick on the inside, but it's so long on the outside. God wants that kind of relationship with you. When you wake up and you wait, they just kind of dissipate yeah. and just go. Yeah, because so. that enemy is there to steal it. He's oh, there to steal it. that's why they leave? Rob, kill, and destroy. Yeah. I did not realize that's why they He's leave. He's right there to steal them. Wow. He doesn't want you, because your spirit got it. It went into your spirit. Mm -hmm. But if your brain doesn't understand what was said to your spirit, then you're not right. going to act on it. God can say right. whatever he wants to, but if you don't act on it, right, right. and that's what he, the devil's doing, he's going, yeah, I can't stop God from talking to you, mm -hmm. but I can stop your brain from acting on it. Catch us next time on Dreamcatcher. Three guests share dreams of very different types of relationships. Vanessa shares an inappropriate relationship from her past, and Shirley is in a beautiful white gown when a stranger hands her a single white rose. Tomasa, her relationship with her friends are strained because someone put vinegar in her purse. I want to encourage you, catch us next time. Until then, catch your dreams. Mm -hmm.